Hi everyone, welcome back to Mostly Math. Today we'll be looking at an example of the following theorem in general relativity, or GR. It says if we write the metric in terms of a function squared times the flat metric, or in a conformally flat form, with the conformal function being omega of x and y, here it's going to be squared, then half of the important curvature constant, the Ricci scalar, is actually going to be minus the Laplacian of the log of the conformal function over the square of it. I'm not going to prove this. It's a relatively straightforward and tedious exercise, but I'm just going to apply it for a specific example to give a refresher on how to take the Laplacian and the log of multivariable functions. Basically, you can feel free to forget everything about GR for now and just consider this a straightforward multivariable calculus exercise. Okay, it can also be shown that the sphere can be written in the following form. It can be written as the r squared plus r squared d omega squared over one plus a quarter of the r squared squared by using a simple coordinate transformation and where r is the usual r squared of x plus y squared. Not going to show this either. Let's just proceed with the calculation. This is the r squared plus r squared d theta squared over one plus a quarter of x squared plus y squared all squared and from here we can identify the function omega it's simply one over omega squared is this thing here so this tells us that omega is equal to one over one plus a quarter of x squared plus y squared, which we're going to define to be one over little omega, which is going to be what we're gonna use for the rest of the calculation. So we have that little omega is going to be one plus one quarter x squared plus y squared. And we see that we have the Laplacian here, we're going to eventually have to take the derivatives of omega. I'm only going to do it for the x derivative since the y derivative is the same by symmetry. So let's just start computing derivatives. Uh, we have that dx by omega. FYI, I'm going to be using the gr notation for partial derivatives. So of course, uh, dx is equal to d by dx. This is very standard. In GR. I'm not just making this up. People do use this. The x derivative is obviously going to be uh, 1 quarter times 2x, which is just x over 2, of course. And then the second derivative, of course, is 1 half. And we can see that the y derivatives are the same with x being replaced by y. Okay, awesome. Now we have that. Gonna need some more room to calculate the following expression. Yeah, gotta erase everything, don't I? All we need to know is the definition of omega being equal to one over little omega. And then we'll deal with that at the end. All right. We are going to start by computing only the x derivative component of the Laplacian. It's not really a component since it's a scalar, but we can get the y component simply by interchanging x and y by symmetry. We are going to start by calculating the following expression minus 1 over omega squared. I want to write that so you can see it. Minus 1 over omega squared dx squared of log omega, which we immediately want to write down in terms of the little omega. So we have going to be minus little omega squared dx squared 
log of one over omega. And you're going to see shortly why I decided to introduce the little omega because we can use the properties of logarithms to simplify this further. You can simply take the reciprocal outside as a minus sign and becomes plus omega squared dx squared log of omega. This is much more straightforward than if you did not define the small omega, it would just become much messier. You can feel free to try it for yourself, though I would not recommend it. All right, let us begin calculating. Okay, so this is going to be omega squared. And now we are simply going to calculate one derivative. Uh, so we're gonna have, we know obviously that uh, d by dx log of x is equal to one over x. We're gonna use this here, but in the multivariable calculus format. I guess I should mention earlier, uh, we used the fact that log of one over x is minus log over x. Just wanted to mention that for completeness. So it's gonna be the derivative of differential over the thing itself. Since if we wanted to write this in terms of differentials, uh, we would have, you know, uh, d log x is just going to be dx over x, which is easier to extend to the multivariable calculus format here. And now we just want to use the product rule. So f over g prime just equal to f prime g minus f g prime over g squared. That's the way that I always remember it. There are other ways about crossing the river and under the bridge or something. I don't know. I just remember this. And if I forget, I can derive it from the product rule. So let's begin the calculation of the second derivative now product rule. So we have the derivative of the thing on top, which is just going to be, yeah, I'm going to have uh, dx squared omega multiplied by the thing in the bottom times omega. I guess I have to write a parentheses here really to avoid ambiguity. Then we're going to subtract dx Omega multiplied by the derivative of the thing on the bottom, which is dx omega again squared. And then we cross the bridge and go under the river or whatever. Get a factor of omega, which we see thankfully actually cancel out to help us with this calculation. Awesome. Don't need the omegas anymore. And this is as far as we can go without incorporating the y components as well. So we have the x component of the Laplacian being this. All we have to do is add the y component and we're done. Making sure I did that correctly. Yeah. Actually, before I, I proceed, I will actually evaluate this in terms of x's and y's. Okay, since we have them up there, dx squared of omega. Well, that's just one half omega minus dx of omega squared. Well, that's just x over two squared. Uh, just gonna be one half omega minus one fourth x squared. And this is as far as we wanna go before we incorporate the y's. So I'm just going to write our final result to give us more room. This x component is just one half omega minus one quarter x squared. And now where you are going to need the definition of omega. Shortly, we're gonna need that. All right, so now let's compute the quantity that we're actually interested in. That's going to be uh, one half r is now going to be minus one over omega squared, plus the squared of log of omega, which of course we evaluated the x component here. D 
dx squared plus dy squared log of omega. So we just have to write the x term here and then add the same thing with the y term and we'll be all set. Just gonna be one half omega minus one quarter x squared plus one half omega minus one quarter y squared. And these two conspire to be regular omega. And this becomes uh, one quarter x squared plus y squared. And now we can simplify this as follows. It's just gonna be omega is now one plus one quarter x squared plus y squared. We're gonna subtract off the one quarter of x squared plus y squared. And we see all the variable dependencies cancel out to be one. So this tells us that half the Ricci scalar is one or that the Ricci scalar is two, which is a known result for the sphere. It just shows that this theorem um, reduces to the known value and it's a nice exercise in multivariable calculus and an exercise in the value of defining a function to be one over some other function if it helps you in the, in the calculations. And if you enjoyed this one and some more math, please subscribe. I'll see you next time.